Okay, so today we are having a, having a first look at the Cessna 195 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's been released as one of the local legend. It's very reasonably priced. I believe it's been developed by Carinado. So let's have a look around it. You can see it's absolutely wonderfully modelled. These kind of compound curves are actually stunning around the cockpit and the engine nacelle. Very, very cool. So, we are at Bucket Airfield in Buckinghamshire and we're going to take it for a quick circuit and have a fly of it, see how it goes and just see, you know, how it operates. So we'll jump in and have a look around. You can see, in common with many Carinado aeroplanes, it looks almost photographic inside. Lots of things are clickable. So if we go and jump over here, we can open the door, click on the handle to close the door again. The the windows do go up and down. Interestingly, you get this graphical artifact if you're using the LSS, which I am today. Um, there's a binnacle compass, obviously. Uh, altimeter, we can press B to calibrate. It looks like it's already calibrated. Um, what else? We've got some breakers, we've got a few switches for the beacon lights and pitot heat, things like that. And there's a, a drain switch down here, I don't think it's functional, but there is a fuel cutoff switch for the tanks overhead, because obviously this is gravity fed from the wings. And obviously your normal controls, so you've got mixture, uh, propeller RPM, primer, carb heat, push starter, there's magnetos are independent of the starter, obviously that's something that um, Cessna refined over the years, and it what looked like fairly modern instruments actually, I don't think these are original, you know, they're not um, 1950s instruments. There's a, a nav radio here, which obviously corresponds with the nav radio, there's com radio, com2 as well, there's also um, a transponder, Attitude indicator, indicated airspeed, uh, what else do we have? All the normal instruments for the engine, so you know, oil pressure, temperature, fuel level, manifold pressure. So it's all looking good. Okay, so should we get this up and running? So master electrical power to on. Turn the alternator on before we get the engine running. Let's get the radio master switch to on, which switches on the radio stack, obviously. Let's go and turn on the beacon lights and the pitot heat. Turn the magnetos to both run and then hold the... Oh, we need to put the mixture to rich. Propeller RPM is already on full, so... And it starts up immediately. It sounds really good, doesn't it? I'm just going to check the sound levels on the recording to see that you can hear it. Yes, you can hear it. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to taxi out and take this thing for a fly. So, let's come off the parking brake. I'm going to take off with no flap, because I suspect this thing is designed to take off with no flaps. Just looking at the wing shape. So we're just taxiing gently out. So this is Booker Airfield. Notice the forward visibility in this because that great big radial engine is very restricted. I'm just going to wait here for this van. Is he going to do something? Otherwise we'll go on the grass and go around him. He's waiting there. I have to say, the sound this aeroplane is fantastic. Taxiing onto runway 24 at Booker. Should get a flight in before the sun goes down with a bit of luck.
full throttle. Holding quite a lot of right stick as the tail comes up and then correcting. So the plane wants to fly already so we'll rotate and it's straight into the air. So it accelerated through 80 knots remarkably quickly. So we'll come back to 80% throttle. Just climb out gently. I have to say, it's very easy to fly. OK, so we're keeping an eye on this compass here. and see if this keeps track with the... Uh, the binnacle compass. So we'll begin a left turn. We come around to 60 degrees. The interesting thing to me will be to see if this deviates after a turn or a couple of turns with the binnacle. So we're climbing at a thousand feet a minute, coming up to two thousand feet. So there's 60 degrees. And yeah, that's pretty much matching the binnacle and the gyro compass. So there's not much drift going on there. OK, let's have a look around the aeroplane then. So as you can see, unless you sit down in the seat and scoot yourself away from the, the side of the aeroplane, you can't actually see much out of the side. So there's the runway we've just taken off from. So yeah, visibility is a struggle. But the instruments are very clear to read, so, you know, no bad thing. It's worth noting for anybody who's interested, I am running DirectX 11 and um, DLSS. So I've got it on balanced mode. But I'm running in 4K though, and that's being downrated by OBS to 1080p for the YouTube video. So it's probably you you would probably never see a, an accurate reflection of what I'm seeing to be honest. Okay, let's do some tests then. I'm gonna pull the nose up into a stall. I'm gonna do a powered stall to begin with. We'll just get rid of that um Tower Cessna November 654 Echo Romeo frequency G. Okay, so we're holding the nose up, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, trying to hold it level, and it's going to drop the right wing. We'll hold the elevators on, see what happens. So if you let, if you don't let go of the elevator, the plane will continue rolling. Let's get our bearings back. Where are we? Where's the airfield? I'm just going to circle to figure out where we are. Back at 50% throttle. There's the runway. Okay, so we'll fly back towards this, this side of the runway. Throttle again. This time we're going to do a power off stall and see what happens. It takes a while for the engine to lose revs. So, power off stall. If I hold the elevator on, it starts to roll. Notice without the throttle, it the left wing dropped, not the right wing which was probably just to do with turbulence. But it would appear with power, the right wing will naturally, naturally drop. OK, let's go and do a touch and go. Keeping an eye on the airspeed. So it looks like we need about 70 knots or so on approach to avoid stalling. Which is quite a lot, isn't it? It's then it's a big heavy lump of an aeroplane, I guess. So there's the 
Misty airfield over there. side while we're just going back. So I have not got the lights on. So where have I missed the switch for that then? There's the fuel boost. Flaps extend nav lights. Aha! There we go. Would have been useful to have had them on from the start, wouldn't it? It's a gorgeous looking aeroplane, isn't it? Actually, that's not the wrong way, that's somewhere else. Oh, it's a farm strip. Let's go and open up Little Nav Map and help us find our way home. So we've gone over to Flankwell Heath, that's fine. We'll just double back. to go about 300 degrees to get back. Let's see what it's like low over the ground then. So looking at the indicated airspeed meter, it doesn't like going faster than about 200 knots. So in a dive with full throttle, even a full throttle look. Obviously, because we are at quite some speed, it's quite nice that you heard the airframe creaking there with the stress of pulling up so suddenly. Just let it fall over the top. There's Booker Airfield. So let's go for that touch and go. I'm just coming off the speed. So we're going to put the flaps down and increase the throttle. Hold it at 80 knots or so. flaps down, even at such a steep approach, it's not accelerating too much. So just coming up to 95 knots. Remember this is going to be a touch and go. So we don't really mind about being mid-runway mid for the touch. There we go. back up. What about a steep turn? So let's go for it. Hey, the 
70 de uh, 60 degrees, sorry. So there's the wrong way. So we're going to go a bit further out this time and come back. We'll go around the back of this industrial estate and come back for an approach. I actually really like this aeroplane. You have to hand fly it. The visibility isn't great, I'll give it that. But there's, there's various bits in here that I have no idea what they do, I don't know what that's for. Obviously you've got outside air temperature on the thermometer on the other wing room. Okay, let's turn this back in. And we can drop the flaps. this will behave in a side slip. We're about to find out. So that's the wrong way. Well, we may not have to side slip. But it'd be interesting to try it anyway. So we're just opening the throttle. So you can side slip far enough to cause a wing to stall. That's interesting. I'm using full left aileron there, along with full right rudder. So let's try that side slip again. It's a good way of losing speed in a hurry, isn't it? about 65 knots, which was fine. OK, so there you go. This is the Cessna 195 from the local legends in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's get off the runway and taxi back. Shall we look at it from outside again? So if you like this sort of era of aeroplane, you can't go far wrong with it, to be honest. It's very, very pretty. The modelling is absolutely wonderful. You can see the suspension doing its job as we go over the bumps and the ground. that's the most worn to get back onto the taxiway. And over to the other side of the cockpit. Parking brake on. Pull the mixture to kill the engine. Magnetos to off. Nav lights to off. Turn all the switches off. <laughs> not doing things in the correct order here at all. But we're not going to worry too much. That's the wrong way. 
And that's it. Um, the fuel cutoff valve wasn't... Can we push it all the way around? Should we try it? No, we can't. We can only go left or right. We can't push it all... Oh, we can go. We have to go via the right direction to get it to off. Okay. So there you go. The Cessna 195 in Microsoft Flight Simulator I think is rather marvellous. So, it's very reasonably priced. If you like this sort of airplane, go get it. It's in the marketplace right now. Okay, I'll see you again soon.